All right, guys, welcome back to another Adobe Illustrator series on how to draw a car. In today's episode, we are going to continue the shading of the body of the car. So let's just go ahead, not waste any time, and jump on into it. All right, so last time we left off, we just drew the windows. So now we're going to create a new layer, and we're going to call this the shading layer. And I want to keep this underneath the windows layer, so we'll just drag that below. Now I want to change the color of the body lines. So I'm going to hit Command A on my keyboard to select everything on this layer. And now I'm going to double click the stroke on the tools palette and bring up the color picker and select an equally bright color to the magenta. Since that's the color that I'm used to working with for the shading layer, I don't want to start throwing myself off. So typically when I begin work on the shading layer, which is essentially just all of the coloring on the body panels, I try to go for some of the more obvious uh, shapes or highlights that could also serve as reference points as I continue to draw. So I'm starting with this wheel well here so that I have a pretty good idea of where the highlight's gonna fall above this wheel. Now, once I have that shape drawn, I can switch the stroke to fill, and that's still picking up that bright orange. So let's use our eyedropper tool or eye on our keyboard to select one of those predetermined colors we picked earlier. Now I'm gonna hit A on my keyboard to bring up the selection tool, just to adjust the nodes of that shape a little bit so that it's not kind of funky. And while I still have this color chosen for the fill color, I'm gonna start drawing a few more highlights that will share the same color as these other shapes. So they're a little hard to see. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to unlock the main body shape and select this kind of gross color as the fill color. Now I can kind of see those highlights that I've started drawing, those first three shapes that we just drew. I don't like this color though, so I'm gonna select the main body shape and I'm gonna take some of the yellow out of it. That seems a little better, just for now. It's kind of an off-white color, so it's, it's gonna be hard to color this one. Especially since it's kind of an off-white, so anything that you, any colors that you start to pick are gonna immediately look yellow or like baby food, and uh, there's really no sense in trying to get all of those accurate right now. It's just getting the shapes drawn, kind of like the wheels of the BMW we did in the last series. Just keep plugging away at it. And in the end, we can change all of the colors of these shapes to get them where we want them. Okay, so I had the transparency on the main shape turned down. Uh, so I'm going to bring that back up to full opacity by selecting that bottom shape there. And, that takes me back to that original color that I don't like. But I wanna bring all of the highlights up to the same color. So I select them all and choose one color for them. Now I'm just trying to compare that what I'm doing looks natural or normal. And I'm just still not happy with the main body color of this car. So I'm gonna bring my eyedropper tool back out again. And I'm gonna start selecting some of the colors up in the wing here. And as you can see, there's a variety, but this seems to be working for me right now. It's kind of this gray. Um, so I'm gonna add another square and select that color just to kind of keep it so I don't lose it later. I don't feel like adding it to my swatch panel since it's only gonna matter for this one particular illustration. So just like before, going back over on the shading layer, using my pen tool to outline and trace each area that I feel is going to share the same color as the rest of them. Now, that, this shape up here, I wasn't really happy with in the beginning. So I've decided to delete it and we'll come back and draw it so it's a little larger and stands out a little bit more. It's not a racing stripe, it's a, it's a big highlight. All right, so the rest of those that I just drew, we'll select all of those, bring those up to the same color and just keep going. So now I'm going to draw this large shape here that kind of encompasses the quarter panel, but I'm gonna integrate it 
with that shape that I just drew again. So they kind of look like they belong together. Utilizing the body lines here. And that's looking okay. We can always build off this later, but now we're starting to see the shape of a car when we turn off that background layer. So now I'm just going to go in and I'm going to start drawing a few shadows. Since we've kind of been working with the same two colors since we've started, sometimes I like to stop, take a break from the highlights, and draw a couple of shadows. So these two different shadows down here by the trunklet are perfect. Uh, since the main focus of this illustration is the rear of this Civic. The reason I chose this illustration is that passenger side taillight. It's insanely detailed. So I chose this to challenge myself further with that. And that'll be a whole episode on its own. Okay, so that looks okay. There's obviously more dimension, but I want to make that darker. Now that we've dragged the black down further, now that's looking a lot better. You can start to see the back of the car take shape. All right, now we're gonna draw a few more shapes to define the trunklet of this Civic. And it's not gonna take many, just two or three. So I'm just gonna roughly draw those out now and I'm not gonna worry about assigning colors at this point. It's just too easy to go back and fix it later. So basically the idea is to try to get as many rough shapes as you can draw in, and if you can, like this shape I know is going to be a highlight, you can go ahead and assign that color right away. But the shape previously drawn for that uh, shadow under the trunk lid, we will go back and most likely make that darker. So now you can see I'm drawing on top of another shape. And that's because my intent is to grab this shape and drag it one, two, three paths down so that it sits underneath those shapes I previously drew. And next I'll choose a color that's just slightly darker than the main shape for the trunk lid always going back and adjusting my own lines. Now, instead of fiddling with those lines for the next 10 minutes, I'm just gonna draw a really smooth highlight for the very top of this trunk lid. And then where these lines meet and the funky shapes don't line up properly, I'm just gonna cover them with this shape. So it's kind of like killing two birds with one stone. You know, you get, uh, an extra bit of detail, and then you can hide some of the more rough shapes that you might not want to show. And even so, I still go back and adjust this one. But now, now we're really starting to see the dimension this trunk, uh, the back of this car can have. So I want to go back and in keeping with that momentum, draw a few more shadows to kind of, th and this will kind of wrap up uh, the shading on this car. Uh, because again, I want the focus of this illustration to be the taillights. So I'm not going to go too crazy when it comes to drawing the highlights and shadows on the body of this car. And again, I'm just drawing right on top of these highlights so that I can go back to my layers palette and drag them to the bottom. All right, zoom out, look at our work, and that looks pretty good. So let's just keep plugging away, drawing a few more shadows and adding a little bit more dimension to this illustration. I didn't want to make this too, too complicated. So just by going over the car, like just kind of go over it once and you draw all the highlights that you can see and you go over it again, you know, the same approach, but this time drawing all the shadows. And once you're kind of done with that, you can really start to get an idea of the illustration taking shape and looking like an actual car. Now here I could draw just one line and have a stroke, but in case I want to come back and edit those later, basically due to perspective, I'm going to draw them as shapes so that I have those four points. And now I'm just working on the coloring of the shadow and trying to make it a little bit more believable without just sticking to solid gray. The car is a little off-white, it has a little yellow, so we want to make sure we pick up some of those colors as well. Okay, this is starting to look good, but I want to be able to make sure that I'm going on the right path, so I'm going to pause on the shading layer here for a brief moment, and I'm going to add the taillights and the license plate, but I'm not going to add any of the details right now. 
I'm only going to add the rough outline and shape of each, the taillights and the license plate. It's kind of like the same concept we did earlier with the windows where we kind of paused, drew the, you know, the side windows and the back window and then continued on with the shading layer. It's the same concept here. Uh, now that we've added some more highlights and shadows, I uh, kind of want to make sure that I, you know, add a few more elements to make sure that I'm on the right path, on the right track, so to speak. So now, we'll, now that the tail lights are kind of arbitrarily in, let's add the license plate, but the license plate clearly isn't red. So I'm going to double click the fill, bring up the color picker and choose a color that's a little bit more representative of the license plate itself, which is this green color. All right, that looks pretty good. So now I'm going to come in with my selection tool and just adjust a few of the shapes that might be a bit wonky right now. Then I'm going to create a new layer called the shadow layer. And this is just going to be one large shape that sits underneath the, uh, basically sits on top of the original and underneath everything else. And when I want to turn off the original, uh, this kind of grounds the entire illustration and helps it not appear as though it's floating. And I just made the same mistake as I did in my last episode where I accidentally drew this shape on the shading layer by not locking it. So I'm going to take this path and right now I'm just going to put it up on this right tail light. And since it's only got this one path in it, now I'm going to drag that shape back down to the shadow layer where it should be lock all of the other layers so that I don't forget this time. And now is kind of a good time to go back and proof your work. Uh, as you can see, I forgot the line that separates the front door and the back door. So taking this time to go back and do a little proofing of your illustration, I do see a few more things that I might have missed while drawing the first time. So I'm just going to add a couple more little shadows and little details before moving on from the shading layer and locking it for good. And I think that this is a good stopping point for today. We've added a few more layers to start us off well when we pick the illustration back up and we have enough detail in the bodywork that it is starting to really look like a car now. So uh, as always, I would like to thank you guys for watching and hitting that like button. If you are interested in more Adobe Illustrator CC tutorials and other car related nonsense, consider subscribing and hitting that bell. Also, be sure to check out my Instagram and Patreon pages that are linked below, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.